Hey, it's Joe Lyons from The Automator, and this is an extract from our Intro to VS Code course. The course is mainly centered around using VS Code and not really Auto Hotkey. We do touch on how to configure Auto Hotkey and do those things, but it's really about how to use an editor or really an IDE because IDEs are incredibly powerful, and VS Code is the Ferrari of editors. It's by far the most popular editor out there, uh, IDE out there right now. So. I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you like it, you can. Uh, we have the course, I believe, is over four hours long. And of course, we have a double your money back guarantee. So there's absolutely nothing to risk if you want to try it. Hope you enjoy it. If you enjoy, learn something here, please like the video. It really helps us out. Have a great day. Cheers. Hey, everyone. So, this first video, we're going to talk about the major differences between an editor and an IDE. An IDE, if you don't know, is an integrated development environment. And the name itself kind of implies it's more powerful than an editor, right? That is correct. It's just, it's an editor on crack, so to speak. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, it has a lot of uh, features and, and you were uh, kind of like hinting at the power of certain things. Like for example, uh, many editors have what we call IntelliSense that they kind of give you suggestions about the commands that you can type. But I will show you the difference between an editor and an ID in this particular category. So this is, site for our hotkey is, closer to an IDE than other editors, but you will see the limitations right away. Because for example, as soon as I type MSG, it suggests me some of the commands and I hit tab and I got the command, but after that, it doesn't suggest anything else. This is a test, that's it. So, and then some other editors at least give you some parameters that you can put in there, but they will not do what I'm gonna show you next. I'll do the same here in VS Code, which is the one that we're going to be taking a look at. And if I start typing MSG, of course, I get the suggestion of message box. But as soon as I hit tab and I start my parentheses, now I get the parameters that I ha have available, um, some description of each of them. And not only that, when I move to the next parameter, it kind of like highlights where I'm at. Some editors, as I mentioned, do have this capability. I'm not sure if we can turn that on in sites, but I've never seen it. No. But not only that, once you switch to the next parameter, the description below changes. Check this out. Test. And now when I hit comma, now the options, it gives you kind of like a list of the options that you can put in there. So basically, it saves you time because you don't have to be jumping into the help file all the time. That's the, dif the type of differences that I refer to when I say like, hey, they might have similar options, but in an IDE, you will get way, way more things. Yeah, and, and so, what are the workspace integration, right? Of Right. Oh, God, that, that is a huge plus. So editors are usually focused on just grabbing a file and editing it. That's what they are for, right? Um, IDEs, as the name suggests, is integrated development environment, which means when I open a folder like I did here, like my uh, prompt assistant project, it is looking at all the files in this as one big project. And things that you do in code, like for example, including another library, affect how your code is going to behave. So right now, if I comment this line out, you will notice that the highlighting now stops working. And now I get some errors. Uh, let me just show you, I get some uh, here errors. Hey, this variable doesn't appear to have never been assigned a value. The reason why I'm getting that particular error, so to speak, is because as I'm telling you, the integrated development is not just simply looking at your code and putting some pretty colors in it. It's really kind of like understanding, oh, this file must be included. Let me grab all those variables, categorize them, and once I do, then this code down here means something else. It kind of like has some semantics on it. Yeah, which which we didn't mention earlier, but site in that example was pulling up message box as a function because that's a known function for auto hot. Right. However, if you wrote your own functions, it doesn't do a darn thing, right? So yeah, what's cool about VS Code is you can have it monitor the files and it will offer up where you are in those. And if I remember right, you even have a way to document it. So it gives you the tips and stuff as well. Yes, exactly. So right now, just as an example, I just created the test function down here. And as I'm typing up here, you know, test function, I don't get any 
suggestions about that because that's that's your own function. Um, uh, the editor is just suggesting things that it knows about. Right. This thing is not like that. In here, this is a function that I created. Now, as soon as I start typing menu, it will actually offer it up as one of the options in the um, thing. So all of these are objects that I created in different parts of my program, even in different files of my program, of my project, and it still knows that they're there. Just to let you know, the auto hotkey v2 integration with VS Code is really good. Um, other extensions might not have all those capabilities. Like for example, the v1 version doesn't have all of that. That's the reason why as soon as I noticed how good the v2 integration was, I jumped aboard v2 even though I didn't want. Um, but interestingly enough, that's not all it does. For example, um, we do have things like code outline. This is really cool. Uh, let me just uh, hide this bar right here. So it reads all the file, well, the current file, I'm sorry, the current opened file, and it tells you, gives you an outline of all the functions, objects. Um, for example, here, there's a hotkey there, and inside the object, how this object is actually created, there are some properties in it, some methods, and inside the methods, I could see the objects that it has. It's a very quick, for me, and this is basically what I showed in one of our hero calls. I, if I don't know the code, the first thing I will open is the outline and get familiarized with that, what I can do with that object or something like that. But yeah, besides that, we do have advanced debugging tools. We do have uh, some things that allow me to set breakpoints, look at variables in real time when I stop the script, um, set up which variables I want to watch. I don't have to watch all of them at once. I just want to look at one in particular. And most importantly, what is called the call stack, which is an advanced form of debugging in which I can tell how I got to a certain point, especially when I'm trying to track a bug that I have no idea how to reproduce. If I get the error, I stop the script and then I look at the stack trace and see, oh, this is how I got there. In here, in an editor, we you can create a debugging kind of thing for the script and you can create uh, breakpoints in your code, but they're very basic things that you can do. You, you probably will not get too much information out of it because again, that's not what the editor is for. The editor is for editing. You just go in, make some changes, come back out, that's it. Uh, we do have things like smart renaming. Like for example, I don't like the name of that class. I'm going to change it. Hey, do I have to go through all of my files and modify them? Most of the times in a, in a, in a normal editor, uh, these are all the places where that is mentioned. Look at that. So those are all the places where that is mentioned in different forms but probably I don't want to change them all. I just want to change that object. Should I have to do a replace on all and go one by one replacing? Not really. In these advanced type of editors, you can just hit F2, modify the name of the variable, and the tool will know where it makes sense to change it. It will not change, for example, here. In this, in this comment right here, it will not change that because that's a comment, it shouldn't be changed. But when I'm doing like this, it keeps kind of track of those kind of things. So you will not find that in an editor. That is not really a thing. You will have to use the find and replace kind of thing, right? So that next one, though, I was thinking about with the Git integration and most even now with the Copilot integration with it. Oh, gee. So earlier, you typed something and it was offering up. I think they had prompt assistant as a suggested thing. And I was going to say it then. I'm like, that. that's being done by <laughs> AI for you, right? And Right. You've been even more productive lately with just because we have that integration. It's really crazy. Right. Uh, Copilot is insane. I really love it. Git is a must if you're working with more than one developers, right? So that those kind of things, the fact that they're hard coded into VS Code and make it, they make it so easy to work with is great. I would add to that though, the Git integration, absolutely you're working more than one person. It's very important. But if you're also releasing different versions of your scripts and you're just by yourself, it's equally That's valuable. also, yeah, it is easily, is something, 
extremely important to keep track of every one of your versions so that if somebody tells you there is a bug with this one version, you can actually jump to that, look at it in that particular version, fix it, and then bring it up to your actual development and bring that up. So it's, it's, it's extremely important. Um, not entirely needed if it is just for yourself, right? So, but as soon as you start working with two or three more developers, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even dream about creating code without Git at that point, right? Because of the types of issues that it solves. Now, we do have uh, a lot of plugins in VS Code and other IDEs. That's kind of like a given. If you're using an IDE, they usually extend it to do many, many more things. Editors, on their part, they usually, some of them, um, have a plugin system, but that's not all of them. So it is a type of a hit or miss kind of thing that you will have to find out if your editor has that. When would I need an extension? Well, for example, one of the annoyance things that uh, Joe says like, hey, in VS Code, I cannot take a look at the new line characters at the end of each line. So, and I cannot, have, I cannot set that. Well, if you want to have that, just get an extension. Somebody has the same mentality as you. They want to see it. They created an extension. You install it. Now you have it. Um, some of the people like me, I just take a look at my right side and I see that it's line feed. I know what is there. I don't have to look at it, but it is difficult if you don't have what you want. IDE is usually as it is for more generalized purpose purposes. Then they have a lot of extensibility. And VS Code is crazy on that. VS Code is one of the most popular IDEs out there right now. So the amount of extensions that you can find online is, is just insane. Like, to support that, I had been reading this article the other day, and it talked about, I think it was in 2023, VS Code was the preferred ID by 81% of people developing <laughs> on Stack Overflow. Right, that, that was a huge number. And I was just like, just, I just picked one category, machine learning. And just from that, we have 338 different extensions that you can try for that. And I'm like, gee, the good that's news insane. Is, Isaiah has in this course, <laughs> or he's gone through a lot of stuff, right? And has the core really good ones that you'll get to, to, to check out and see if you're interested, right? Because there's right. just, it's been forever I'm looking at him, but yeah. So yeah, a, I think a problem tracker or something you mentioned. Um, I think we went over it. Like, for example, if you start typing something that um, it is not correct, uh, it automatically, for example, ADV, it automatically started tracking in here. Hey, there's a variable in there that kind of like never has a variable, uh, a value. That might be a problem. Um, so it, this happened to me. Like, if I try to set a hotkey that is invalid or some of the things, the problem tracker here automatically tells you how that this is uh, going to be a problem. So I use the message box, but I don't give it any type of, um, so if message box, let me see, so uh, return message box or something like that. I think it goes ahead and creates some type of, um, so probably I, I'm not triggering the problem right now, but if I try to run the code, it's going to be a problem. And the uh, IDE is going to actually catch that problem first right. statically before you actually even run the script. So right now, it seems to be that AutoHotKey allows me to do something similar to this, so I'm not complaining about it. But I know that if I say include and then right, if I try something like this, hey, look at that. Hey, it just told me that the file path is invalid on which line. Yeah. So I just, I just click there. So it doesn't matter where I am on my script. I see the problem, I click on it, and it takes me there. Oh, yeah, I can set a path. Yeah, I have to put something, right? So it is just, and yeah, that, this is a very cool one. If the path doesn't really exist, it also checks on it and tells you, hey, that file doesn't exist. It's really amazing what it does. And in here, it also gives you suggestions. So I put lib, it's suggesting that folder, and in there it suggests me the files that are there. I could just which is select one, like the insane auditory programming inside your code, right? Offering you here are valid paths to where you are, so you don't have to you don't have to fat fingers. Right. 
But as soon as you have something that the uh, the uh, IDE or in this case the extension itself that comes with that I could use in this particular IDE, it can tell that there are some. But, but I will not have that in an editor. I cannot. I guarantee I cannot have that because it is on a file by file basis and it is. Uh, basically, it's not checking for other files at all. It's just focused on this one file. And that's what I would say, those are some of the things that make a very big difference between me choosing an IDE uh, or an editor. I would just say, if you just code like for one hour a day, yeah, use an editor. You, you're probably not doing anything too big to warrant trying to learn this kind of things. But as soon as you start having uh, four hours a day, five hours a day, the type of uh, the, the time savings that an IDE is going to bring, they do make sense at that point to spend some time learning at first, which is probably what you're going to be doing now, right? So you're going to be learning about it so that in the end, when you have, when you work for six months in a project, you're going to have a lot of time savings. It's going to save hours and hours just because it makes your life easier in so many little different ways. Yeah. I think IDs basically work you help you work smarter, not harder. So that's right. That's totally that's totally right.